Anticoagulants are medications that reduce blood clotting or coagulation. They are used to treat and prevent unwanted blood clot formation in conditions such as atrial fibrillation, deep vein thrombosis, acute coronary syndrome, and in patients with a prosthetic heart valve. Anticoagulants are also used to prevent excess coagulation during surgery and dialysis. Coagulation is critical for the control of bleeding, which has four stages. Stage 1, formation of platelet plugs. Stage 2, formation of blood clots, which are essentially platelet plugs reinforced with strands of fibrin. Fibrin is the final product of the coagulation cascade, a multi-step chain reaction where one clotting factor activates the next. The two activation pathways, extrinsic and intrinsic, converge to produce thrombin and ultimately fibrin. Thrombin has a central role. It cleaves fibrinogen to generate fibrin. It further activates platelets and initiates a positive feedback loop that is essential for clot propagation. Stage 3. Termination of clot formation. Antithrombin is among a number of mechanisms designed to control the extent of clot formation. Antithrombin binds to thrombin as well as several other clotting factors and inhibits their function. Stage 4. Dissolution of blood clots. Medications that prevent formation of platelet plugs are antiplatelets. Medications that interfere with the function or synthesis of clotting factors are anticoagulants. Anticoagulants and antiplatelet are the two classes of antithrombotic drugs. Heparin, commonly produced from pig intestine, is a sulfated polysaccharide. Heparin binds to antithrombin and increases its affinity for thrombin and other clotting factors, thereby enhancing antithrombin's inhibitory effect on coagulation, typically up to a thousandfold. Heparin is fast-acting, has a short half-life, and is usually administered intravenously for immediate therapeutic effect. It can also be injected subcutaneously for prevention purposes, in which case the onset of action is within a couple of hours. Heparin is not absorbed through the gastrointestinal tract and therefore cannot be taken orally. The major disadvantage of heparin is that it produces highly variable effects in different patients, thus requiring monitoring with special blood tests and meticulous dosing. Low molecular weight heparin is produced by chemically splitting heparin into pieces of about one-third of its original size. The smaller size reduces its nonspecific binding to plasma proteins and blood components, resulting in fewer side effects, longer half-life, and a more predictable dose-dependent response, so monitoring is not usually required. However, the shorter chain length also reduces its ability to bridge between antithrombin and thrombin, producing a reduced inhibitory effect on thrombin. Its anticoagulation effect relies on inhibition of factor 10A, for which a specific 5-saccharide motif is sufficient. Fondaparinux is a synthetic drug based on this 5-saccharide sequence. It has a longer half-life and is associated with less bleeding complication than low molecular weight heparin in some studies. Vitamin K antagonists, such as warfarin, act by inhibiting the enzyme required for activation of vitamin K. Vitamin K is an essential cofactor for the synthesis of many clotting factors. Depletion of active vitamin K leads to reduced production of these factors. Warfarin is administered orally. It takes days to be effective because the existing pool of active clotting factors needs some time to be cleared. The effectiveness of warfarin is highly variable among patients and depends on a large number of patient-specific factors. Use of warfarin, therefore, requires frequent assessment and monitoring. Direct oral anticoagulants are a new class of synthetic drugs that include direct thrombin inhibitors and direct factor 10A inhibitors. These products have a rapid onset, fewer drug and dietary interactions, and a more predictable dose-dependent response that eliminates the need for monitoring. The major adverse effect of all anticoagulants is uncontrolled bleeding. When this happens, anticoagulants are discontinued. Hemodialysis, red blood cells transfusion, and platelet transfusion may be performed. Activated charcoal may be administered to prevent absorption of the last dose of an oral anticoagulant. In addition, 
Certain anticoagulants have specific reversal agents that can counteract their effect. Heparin's action can be reversed with protamine. Vitamin K, given orally or intravenously, can counteract warfarin. There are also specific antidotes for direct oral anticoagulants.